What are some other or less common methods of funding a business venture? The most common methods are debt and equity issuance. Other methods are inventive methods by which the startup founders can secure the resources that they need in the form of capital, equipment, even human labor, and defer payment on that or reduce the obligation of payment on that till some point in the future or simply defer it altogether. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the more common methods. First, contractual business sale. This is where you purchase a business and get started in the business by buying a, an existing business from someone else. And in doing so, you finance the purchase of the business and generally you pay off the purchase price together with a predetermined interest rate with operational revenue. So it keeps you from having to put all or as much capital into the business up front. That is, you can purchase the business on credit, generally financed with the seller, and operate the business, generate revenue, and pay the seller of the business for the business from what you do in the business. This is usually difficult unless you are able to continue and grow the business very quickly because, once again, the purchase price is going to be some multiple of your annual revenue or your annual profit. So you have to quickly become profitable and generally grow the profitability of the business to make this work. Another method is trade credit. And that's where you work with your suppliers of inventory or raw materials and they supply it to you on credit with financing terms or interest rates applicable and you pay them back over time as you're able to sell the goods that you produce and so this is a way of deferring the obligation to pay for things that would otherwise have an upfront cost and be a barrier to getting started in the business okay pre-sales is a big thing today crowdfunding sites are commonly used for pre-sales individuals have ideas for new products, new services, new value offerings, and they explain it to the populace. They demonstrate their ability to bring it to fruition. Oftentimes they show a prototype, that type of thing, and the populace agrees to pre-purchase. That is, they commit capital. They pledge money towards the venture. And while in most crowdfunding sites, <clears throat> it seems like a pledge to simply support the business, Really what it is, is pre-selling. But this doesn't happen just through crowdfunding sites, obviously. <clears throat> it can happen as well in many different types of businesses, particularly uh, business to business transactions whereby you sell a service or you sell a good ahead of time before it's constructed, before it's manufactured. And you use the revenue from the sale to actually create or purchase or assemble the good or service and deliver it to a customer, client, or end user. Okay, Bartering, uh, this is trading goods and services with others. So rather than commit capital to what you have to buy, you work or provide some product or service that you already have in exchange for that. And oftentimes the work product or the product that you trade in the bartering arrangement is easier to come by than the capital that it would cost to otherwise uh, get your business started. So bartering uh, with particularly with service providers and other things like that that can help you early on in the process is very valuable. Okay. Customer financing again this is where customers again in a way it's very similar to pre-selling but you sell customers on the idea of what you can offer and they offer financing to help you build your business in exchange for some sort of long-term relationship. This is more common in um, supply chain type relationships where perhaps a major customer is looking for a supplier of a particular good or raw material or something like that. You enter into a long-term contract with the customer saying that they will purchase at this amount and they give an upfront payment towards that and you're able to use that upfront payment or retainer in some cases for services to finance uh, the operations of your business. Okay. Borrowing. 
borrowing is a much overlooked aspect of starting a business, but it, particularly in skilled businesses such as uh, photography or um, other computer work and stuff like that where you're borrowing drives or um, operational hardware, it's very common that other people have assets, they they're, have a good relationship with you, and they're willing to loan you equipment. And usually this is a back and forth exchange. You're willing to help them in the same way. So it's very similar to borrowing, bartering, except that there's no permanency of the exchange of value. You're just using someone else's uh, equipment or their um, resources for a short period of time. Okay, Factoring. Factoring is when you make sales, but there's a delay between when you receive payment for whatever service you've rendered or whatever product you've sold. So you sent out invoices. Well, that's an IOU, right? That's an account receivable that you have. So you are actually able to sell that account receivable to third parties who are willing to purchase it at a lower rate than its value. So if you have a IOU that you're going to receive a uh, $1,000, you may be able to sell that ahead of time for $900 and $950. And rather than wait that 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to re receive payment, you receive that $950 now by selling the account receivable to a third party. Where you ultimately receive less money, it can help you uh, bring in money more quickly to make certain that you have the revenue source to keep your operations going. Okay. Leasing equipment and location office, that type of thing. Leasing is an excellent way to jump into an otherwise high, very expensive business. For example, a videographer or photographer uh, might not be able to buy thousands and thousands of dollars worth of lights and cameras and lenses and things of that nature. They may lease it from photography houses, which is uh, a big business whereby they have a lens that's otherwise two, three thousand dollars that they'll rent for on a daily rate of a hundred dollars a day. And a shoot is only a couple of days, so you're able to rent that lens for two days. That saves a lot of upfront capital expenditure simply by renting or leasing the equipment or materials you need to carry on your job. Uh, obviously, it removes a bit of the profit margin from what it would be if you owned it. Uh, and we're able to, once again, simply charge that amount and, and retain that amount without having to pay a rental house for equipment. But when you're just getting started in a business, it can be very useful. And lastly, grants. If you are a nonprofit or in some scenarios a for-profit business, but you have a public purpose, that is, uh, you are a research firm or something like that. We saw this very heavily during COVID. You may be able to get government grants or grants from uh, private nonprofit organizations to support you in whatever you're doing to build your business. It's not as common for for-profit businesses to be able to secure grants or awards of money for a specific purpose especially outside if you're not a researching firm of some sort that's researching uh, something for the public good. But if you do qualify, if you do have some sort of public purpose and, you know, it is worth searching to see whether there are applicable grants out there that could pertain to what you're doing as a business. These are the most common other forms of approaching business funding.